What's wrong with that? All right, well, we'll move it. Hang on. Uh, all right, a couple of things that have happened this week is um, yesterday Tesla um, did their launch for the new Model S Plaid um, and it was a bit of a clunky, like a bit of a clunky launch in my opinion. Uh, so from, I noticed that the audio cut out a couple of times yeah, as they you? were switching over Yeah, and I was like, oh, what is this? You and know? then I, to a trained ear... The whole time Elon was talking, his microphone was also feeding back. Yeah, yeah. Just shocking yeah. stuff. Not very professional from... Uh, I didn't think so. From one of the biggest companies in the world. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, anyway. Uh, and then what else happened? The Fastly servers went down. And so Amazon, Spotify, uh, Reddit, all of the websites went down True. for a bit. And Fastly went up 10%. Yes, in, on the same uh, day. Yes, on, the, on their uh, New York Stock Exchange listing. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'll sit like this so I can look at you. Uh, well, I got other I got other news as well. Jeff Bezos is going to space. Oh yeah, tell so, us. Tell uh, us so about that's that. That's an interesting one. Blue Origin. Blue yeah. Origin. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm not gonna tell you about that. Okay. Because um, it'll ruin what's coming. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the Wyckoff me- method? Wyckoff. Yeah. No. So it's probably a YouTube video I need to share with oh, you. Oh, you're the one that's. I'm the one that's holding the mic like this this time, and you're the one that's. Uh, oh yeah. Going low. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you like it like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so this, uh, so a guy made this, so what the Wyckoff method is a type of technical analysis. So it's like a, it's like a technical analysis theory maybe. Okay. Um, and, uh, and so this guy made a, U- a YouTube video in April. Um, and he basically was like, Hey, this theory called the Wyckoff theory, it's happening with Bitcoin price. Oh. He's like, look, I can like overlay the theory of how it should happen. And it's happened like that for the last like three or four months. Okay. And he's like, I can pretty much predict what it's going to ha- do for the next two months. Anyway, obviously two months later, which is about now, um, it, his video that he posted two months ago went viral because it was actually correct. Oh, yeah. so you need to follow this guy, eh? Yeah. What's so the uh, this Wyckoff Wyckoff method? Wyckoff method. So okay. W Y C K O W F. Okay. Wyckoff method is the um, it's the theory, but this guy, the YouTuber, didn't make it. Um, he just sort of like He's had learned it or something. It. Yeah, yeah. And when he like put the dots together and went, "Hey, like this is, I think this is happening." Yeah. And so yeah, cool. it looks pretty legit. So Bitcoin does that is is that saying that. Bitcoin is going up. Is it bullish? Is uh, it bearish? No. I, from what I can tell, it's like a it's a way institutions make money from retail investors. So institutions like entered the market, the Bitcoin crypto market, yep. sort of at the start of the year. And his theory is that um, this is a way that they, they push and pull the stock in a certain way yep. to make people, f- like retail investors particularly, feel a certain way. And it's it's obviously a bit of a psychological thing. Yeah. And so they kind of like take profit and then they short it and then they go long it. And it's kind of like a the theory of like different, you know, resistance points and yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Anyway, it's really interesting. And so, go. yeah, he overlaid it with the price of a Bitcoin and it, it looks relatively accurate. So That is very interesting. We'll yeah. have to do a segment on that uh, in a later episode. I was I think. thinking about maybe talking about it next time or something. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Well, you'll have to do one. Yes. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take your idea. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Should we tell everyone where we are? Uh, yes, we are in Nathan's, um, all, the, all of our live listeners, we're in Nathan's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> even Luke's left us this time. <laughs> this is so sad. <laughs> I mean, he means there's a lot of people. Here. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but obviously our on top of Luke, there's a lot of other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah on yeah. top of one of our listeners, there are other listeners. Yeah, that, um, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, Luke's back. Well, hey, there he is. <laughs> he heard us talking about him and, um, and he's come back. Perfect. So uh, I actually want to talk about... You didn't tell everyone where we are. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, okay. not, I'm not starting yet. This okay. isn't my... <laughs> All right. Yes, two things. Um, so we are in yeah. Lampton, North yeah. Lampton. North Lampton. North Lampton. Yeah. We're at Nathan's new house. Yes. Uh, <laughs> last two episodes ago, we did Nathan's old house. Yes, that's right. Maybe three episodes ago. It was yeah. Yeah. 11 or 12. Which one? 12. No, 12 was the Ethereum went in your kitchen or something. Was it? Or was no, that, no, no. That, that was 10. 10. That was Maybe 10. it was 12 then. Yeah. 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 And then 13 
Yes, 13 isn't released yet. In the lift. In the lift, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which you will have seen after you've, now that you're watching this one. Yes. And now we're here. Now we're here, yes. I really have to finish editing that um, <laughs> that other one, but we'll worry about that another day. This. Um, and then we, we've also, can you guess the number that we did at my old, old house? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. Um, that was three. Was I think. it three? Yeah. That was three, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the show that hits harder than Floyd Mayweather hits Logan Paul. Welcome to HQLA episode 14. <laughs> We're going to space, baby. Well, you could almost say that the other way around. Because I didn't watch the fight. Yeah. I probably should. I'm sure it's on YouTube or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you mean? The, show, the, the thing where the biggest boxer of all time and the biggest YouTuber of all time <laughs> fight each other. You think it's on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not. Maybe. Um, Pay-per-view. So I heard some people talking about it and they were saying that um, Floyd's tactic is really just survival. Like he does, he's not like super aggressive. Yeah, yeah. So I, from what I could tell from this conversation, it sounded like Logan was putting most of the punches. Uh, yeah, so I I personally think that it was a bit of a Have you setup. seen it? Yeah, so okay. I've seen, oh, I've well, seen, well, I've seen a, bits of it. You've got a lot more information than I do. Okay, I've seen highlights. I've seen highlights. Okay. But my theory is that... Cause Floyd is... As a man walking a dog. Oh, nice. Floyd's Floyd's 50 nil, like, in terms of wins to losses, yep. right? Yeah. And Logan's, um, I think, I don't know, one. he's either won one or lost one, yep. but he's like one nil, whatever way around. Okay. Um, and Logan, and I think that this wasn't, this was like a technical tie or whatever. Yes. Because both of, none of them knocked each other out. Yes. But um, I watched a video of Floyd punching, right? And it's insane the speed yeah. that he can punch at like yeah. the um the insane power right yeah right and then logan i watched a video contrastly logan training yeah and logan's just punching like a, a regular yeah amateur boxer. Like you can see it coming yeah, yeah 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 and um and floyd is literally punching so fast that it's like really it's like insanely fast and so there's no way that it wasn't set up for right. logan to look good and yeah. for Floyd to get paid. so yeah. cause, And especially because it went for 10 rounds or whatever. Yes. I but I'm not an expert, so... Nor am I. But I think you know. you're probably right. All right. You ready to, be, to start my first segment? <laughs> I'm ready you start I'm first re- segment. I'm ready to segment. I'll bleep that out. Get, get, get. <laughs> I'll bleep you out. I'm, I'm the final editor, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you, should start, um, you should start just putting like a blurry thing around yeah. everywhere. <laughs> that's like that's the, oh, the, video, that's the yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah that's like the video censor, no one censorship read. right it's like the yeah no one can read it yeah 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 all right no can say something face. say something that'll bleep out well it's you can't say something. that nathan <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm should, if i'm out. moving my hand you like put it on my hand so it looks like i'm giving the finger or something <laughs> yeah do that now <laughs> oh my gosh wow this is a lot of censoring that i have to do yeah. all right <laughs> a good day <laughs> <laughs> move faster yeah yeah <laughs> All right, this one is the true battle of the billionaires. Richard Branson, Jeff Bezos, oh. Elon Musk oh. are all trying to get to that final frontier. That's right. This is SPC Virgin Galactic. That's, That's true. what we're talking about today. So Okay. Um, all yeah. right. Yeah, so, uh, so Virgin Galactic. So you're specifically talking about Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic. But, um, You'll obviously are, reference the other people. There are elements of, um, okay. of other companies in here. Gotcha. So SPCE, this is the only one that you can buy. Um, though, so that's, that's, true. that's what makes it interesting. Good call. Um, so Virgin Galactic, Virgin Galactic is Richard Branson's company, which he uh, is focused on space tourism. So the that's whole right. idea is that um, there's a really cool chrome-looking Star Wars ship mm-hmm. thing that he's made. Mm-hmm. That is, it's called uh, it's called the BSS Imagine. Really? Um, so it's actually there's actually a whole bunch of versions. There's the Unity as well. Yeah. All that kind of thing. They've they've developed and developed mm-hmm. as they go. Mm-hmm. But the Imagine got released. Two weeks ago, I think. Really? So, like, as, as a launch video, that kind of thing. Wow. And it was really cool. It was towed out of the hangar by a Range Rover, like a Range Rover Vogue in really? black or whatever. And, um, and yeah, so that's a really cool video. It's, like... That's cool. It looks very... Yeah, and it's, like, the garage door's opening and there's a Range Rover towing, like, a big chrome spaceship, like, True. coming out of a hangar. And it's, like... Um, question. Yes. Of the three projects, which one did you hear of first? Do you know? Or? Virgin Galactic. Yeah, same. Yeah. I feel like I was at school. Yes. I think I even did a school project. So we did on. this as a school project. Did we? This is how I know okay, about the company. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I thought we did. So yeah, we did a school project where we had to redesign the logo of Virgin Galactic. Right. Which is terrible, by the way. Okay. But um, oh, here we go. Hang on. <laughs> but we were really young, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like it was a long time ago. So yeah, the, um, the whole like concept of the company is space tourism. Yeah. So 
that covers taking in that take covers taking passengers to space for fun, but mm-hmm. also means bringing them back at another point in the world much faster than a plane would be able to. That's right. So, so there's some practical purpose. Yeah. So there is a commercial element to it, and yeah. obviously you got to think about this. Uh, in two thousand and four, a flat screen TV cost fourteen thousand dollars or oh, whatever yeah. it costs. Yeah. You yeah. know. Mm-hmm. And um, and now it it's three hundred bucks. You know, you can get the That's same right. thing. So you yeah. Know, I mean, under a thousand anyway. Yeah. So it's like the price of this now is the experiment into Mm -hmm. the future, you know? Correct. So some of the other projects which are competing in space um, tourism. Yeah. We've got Blue Origin, which is founded by uh, Jeff Bezos. Yeah. So he spends about a billion dollars a year on that. um, And they're trying to make space tourism work as well. Um, So Bezos created the company in secret in 2000. Uh, This is the the first of the three that I'm going to be briefly touching on. So okay. it's actually this was founded first, uh, which I didn't was I didn't it? think. So I thought that it was the last one. I thought it was the most recent one. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, so yeah, just to um, just off the back of the dot com bubble bursting, so it would have been hard to fund. Yes. I don't know how he. I think he did it all personally. Yeah. Uh, not well, I don't know what's sure. the definition of founded. Like, put a billion dollars into and is hired it? engineers. Okay, and, I don't know. Or is it just like registered the business name? True, maybe maybe you just registered the business name. <laughs> I don't know. I don't actually. I'm not in depth on that. Okay. Um, so yeah, he um, he announced this week that he's going to be taking a trip to space in July this year. Wow, that's soon. Wait, that's like next month. Yeah, so that's next month. Gotcha. Uh, and on the back of that announcement, Richard Branson announced that he's going to be taking a trip into space, but two weeks earlier, <laughs> so so that he can um, so that he can beat the uh, billionaire okay. into space. Gotcha. Okay. Um, because yeah, because it's uh, billionaires are petty like that, I guess. Yeah. They've all got their they've all got their space travel companies. <laughs> So we could see a big purge of all of the billionaires if Elon jumps in as well. Or all of the billionaires might die in the next two months. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they might just blow up in flames. That's what I was saying. We oh. might see a purge of the billionaires. Oh, I see. I don't know what purge means. <laughs> oh, it's like death. Oh, okay. okay. Then yes, I agree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, um, the Bezos one, there was a live auction for a seat on the Blue Origin flight. Oh yeah. Um, so you have to guess what the closing price of a ticket was. It was there's one there was one spot for. It's just you else. and Jeff. You and Jeff, I think. Oh wow. Oh well, I assume and the pilots or whatever. Some and, pilots and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Um, uh, I'm gonna guess it's like. It's surprisingly cheap. I'll give you that. Okay. Okay. That's good. No, that's a good gauge. All right. Well, I'm gonna say it's in the hundreds of thousands then. No, it's more expensive than that. Okay. Okay. So it's in the millions. Yeah. Just guess something. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm gonna say. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Two point eight million. It was four point eight million. Oh, so you were pretty close. Wow. Um, so it's it's an eleven million. It's an eleven minute flight. Really? Um, which means that the cost is four hundred and thirty thousand dollars per minute. <laughs> um, for for that person that's coming up, because wow. I guess they launch, go up into space, yep. come back down, yep. land. Um, because the whole idea. Eleven is, minutes seems pretty short. It is very short. Yeah. Wow. I assume that they're touching space and then coming back. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not it's not a full service, you know, thing. No. Um so I actually personally think that's very cheap. If you consider <laughs> that you may become friends Good for you. With, must if, be nice. Well <laughs> <laughs> must be very nice. But I actually think it's very cheap if you consider that you may become friends with Jeff Bezos. <laughs> who But if you have if you have that kind of money to spare, you probably don't care. Yeah, but if you <laughs> if you have Twenty million dollars, and you spend five million dollars on a ticket. Oh, okay. And you want to fund your next company. Okay, so it's a bit, you, bit of a gamble. And you accidentally become best friends with, by coincidence, Jeff Bezos on the eleven-minute flight. Oh, so what do you do? <laughs> so what do you? So oh, oh, Amazon. I haven't heard of that. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Yeah. The whole time you're not just like. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, while you're taking off, and your face is melting off. And yeah. 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 All the gravity's going crazy. Yeah. Um. So yes, another project. Uh, is SpaceX, obviously. Yes, SpaceX. So Elon Musk's space company. Yes. This has a lot more hype than the other two, I think. Yeah. Um, and obviously because of Elon, he's, a, he's mm. much more of a character. He is a character. Um, so his main goal there isn't space tourism, but it is to colonize Mars. <laughs> um, so <laughs> uh, another goal, which I found out about researching this one, <laughs> is global coverage of broadband internet. So Elon founded uh, this company in 2002, two years after Jeff Bezos. Mm-hmm. Uh, and since 2018, SpaceX has launched 1,800 Starlink satellites. Yeah, wow. Out in the total of, and he's planning on a total of 4,400. Wow. Um, which will provide global internet everywhere. That's wow. like That's like the plan there, Starlink. That's so, cool. 
Yeah, that's the project. So I think he's got more of a practical project than the other two. Yeah. Um, like space tourism, you know, that's all well and good, but... Um, you're, not, you're not achieving much with space tourism. Yeah. I mean, I guess you're cutting out the need for planes maybe, but then it's like, even then, is it like environmentally good to like launch rockets just to get somewhere faster? I don't know. I don't know if it's better than a plane or not. So, you know, don't take my word for it. Um, anyway, the 6th of June, six days ago, SpaceX launched its 125, 125th successful mission. Did it? So, Wow. Um, it's also had four failed launches in the last year, which have led to full explosions. Okay, some um, deaths. So, yeah, but okay. 125 successful and That's four, good. You know, I mean, yeah. That's good. Um, and we can't forget that Elon launched the Tesla Roadster into space in 2018, oh, which, was, right. um, which was pretty crazy. I saw a funny um, TikTok where someone, like, t- he was just walking around the street and someone ran up to him. It was like a while ago. I think it was just before he was going to launch it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And they're like, why are you launching a, a Tesla into space? Like, where, where, where? And then he t- like, turns around and he goes, I don't know. If, I guess it's true. I don't know. But he goes like, um, I initially sent a block of cheese into space and I don't have anything particularly special that I like about cheese. <laughs> and then he like turns around and he walks up. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's so Elon. Yeah. <laughs> a block of cheese. Okay. Well, you know, it makes apparently it did builds the know. builds the Tesla brand. You know how many how many BMWs are in space? You yeah, know? exactly. So, um, so back to Virgin Galactic there. Yeah. Um, so they've launched their first sub sub orbital space flight with the VSS <laughs> Unity. Words yes. are hard to say, man. I yeah, say words. I know words. Uh, English. So, um, so the VSS Unity has two pilots, and it was launched okay. uh, into an orbit of eighty two point seven kilometers away from the uh, you know Earth's Earth level. Um, which is actually where it officially enters outer space. Okay. So, yeah. What's that, what's that called? Water level? Ground level? Well, I, I'm just realizing I think we're starting to cross over into a threshold of information that we don't know that much about. I think that <laughs> it's we're becoming quite to, apparent. I think it's something that's it's really embarrassing because it's actually such a basic like yeah. thing to know. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. Altitude zero. I don't know. Yeah, zero. When do we? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know what that? You know what 82 off the Earth means, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But from where? Like Mount Everest. How high is that? Yeah, but it's off it's off water level. It's off oh, like the zero altitude okay. like level. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I thought it was anyway. Perfect. Uh, anyway, it officially I didn't enters. even know what a lunar eclipse was. Yeah, it's where the sun is in front of the moon or the moon. But in it's front complicated. Of the sun. Have you ever looked into it? Well, yeah, there's multiple ones. It's so there? complicated. Yeah. Yeah. You got the you got the waning and the waxing moon and the <laughs> that kind of thing. So you know more, I don't know. Yeah, see. Space. Yeah. Anyway, so Virgin was um, was founded in 2004, which is two years. So every two years, a billionaire was starting a space company. Oh, true. Because it goes 2000 with Blue Origin. So Virgin was the last. Yeah. Oh. So um, so I actually thought it was the first. Yeah, I agree. Like, because I don't know, I maybe we just knew about it earlier. Well, than, it was just a school project. I yeah, think, that did we didn't. It. Yeah, and it's like who who knows what SpaceX is when you are eight years old or whatever. No. So yeah. Well, kids do nowadays. Well, true, but <laughs> when well, you not back in our day, it wasn't a hype thing. It was no. just you only knew what NASA was, pretty much. That's right. Now, um, no kids, pr- probably kids don't know what NASA is. <laughs> yeah, they don't do anything cool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but they do know what SpaceX is. Yeah, yeah. No, kids wear the um, the NASA hoodies. They're, um, do they? Okay. Yeah, but they're like bootlegged by someone else. That, like, oh, yeah. True. It's a big merch That's thing. That's like a cotton on thing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because it's probably not. How can they do that? It's probably, it's because it's a government agency, I assume. So they probably don't have a trademark on okay. NASA. I mean, that's just my assumption. I don't know, though. Fair. I like oh, it. I thought Chris was back. Um, Who? So, nothing. No one. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> I said I thought it was Christmas time. Um, <laughs> so yeah, every two every two years. So this one's actually the newest um, of the space companies. Yes. Well, of those three space companies, it's probably yep. not the newest space company ever. Um, not so, that I can imagine there'd be that many popping up. That's true. But uh, you're probably right. Yeah, probably recently though. It's probably okay. more. So this is really cool. I've got some images to show you. Perfect. Um, so this is the... I can't read and show you. So okay. I'm going to show you these ones. Yep. So gotcha. that. Yep. It's, a, it's like a triple um, thing going on. Hang on. I've got, I got another one, but it's not um, It's not flicking through to the next one. Obviously, go, everyone will be seeing this on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So video. there's there's another Sick. one there. Okay, so it's the same plane. Okay, yep. So yep. yeah, just a, just a bit of a different angle. Okay. So the, um, the way that it works is there's a... The spaceship is in the middle. Okay. Um, the what they're actually using, and then there's a sort of a catamaran style of plane. Oh yeah. With two. I can say that. Yeah. So there's like essentially two planes mm-hmm. with like a central wing connecting them, mm-hmm. and that's where the spaceship sits, and then it drops off 
um, oh. and launches from there. And the wings and the outside bits to stay is one thing. Yeah, yeah. And the wings and stuff, whatever, go down and land. Really? Then the Virgin Galactic, like Unity or, or yep. um, whichever one they, they launch, off. shoots off into mm-hmm. space from there. Mm-hmm. So the advantage of that is that they're not launching from the ground yep. like a rocket would. Yeah. Um, so they're launching from orbit mm-hmm. and then because they're already moving and whatever. Yes. So like they just have to add the force to yes. get out yep. into the um, into the atmosphere. Physics. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. we actually did physics. I don't know why we would struggle with any um, <laughs> any terms. So um, I didn't learn about lunar eclipses in, in uh, physics. That's so. true. It was a long time ago too. So. It's true. It was um, shockingly long. <laughs> yeah, shockingly long. Yeah. So it um yeah. So it takes off with that and then releases from there and then that central part. The spaceship part um, can come back and land on a runway. Yep. So on um, a runway. Yeah. So it's really cool. Oh. So it's like okay. a plane. It turns. It goes into space, then it comes back. All is like this one wow. central. This That's one very thing. clever. So yeah, it is. It is quite incredible, mm-hmm. and I'm sure they'll get it to the point where it can take off itself mm-hmm. as well. Yes. And um and yeah, it's able to do its own thing yep. without having the extra parts. Yeah. But um but yeah, it's um and then that yeah that big wide plane is already already gone and landed. But yeah. Wow. So the um the International Space Station has actually said it'll open up for tourists. Oh yeah, um, name a thing I haven't thought about in a while. ISS. That would be one. <laughs> Isaac Smith ship. Um <laughs> so yeah, the International Space Station. That is true. That is a thing that I haven't thought about for a while. Um because they used to do I think they used to do a lot more videos and news stories where they would just like have the guys and they would be like squirting a bit of juice. I think so too. And that used to be a thing like all the time. Yeah. It would be like, yeah, we're just live linking to the, yeah. you know, you'd be on sunrise or whatever. And, and everyone's like, just constantly just amazed at the the no gravity and what they can do. Yeah. Like, oh, look at what they've figured out how to do this week. Yeah. And oh, look, this is how I write with my pen. Yeah. And then, you know, they, yeah. they just hold it and throw the pen at the paper or whatever. I think it's so like, too. It's all, all a bit of fun. Anyway, so they don't do that much anymore. Do you reckon they still make those videos, but we just don't watch them? They maybe think, they think everyone's still watching it. Well, maybe it's because of all the Netflix and streaming and Possibly. stuff. Possibly nobody really watches TV anymore. True, it's probably, it's still, it's on probably TV. still on. Yeah, yeah, you just don't know. That'd be it. So, um, so the currently, um, the yeah, it's it's opening up for tourists, so that'll be cool. But they'll have to actually make something that gets the space there. station is. Did you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, well, they said they're open to opening up when. When they have something that will launch and connect with it. And all so they're open to opening up when they open up. <laughs> yeah, many openings will open. Um, <laughs> so currently the um, the tickets for uh, Virgin Galactic flights, they're yes. indicative only, but they'll cost $250,000. Bargain. Um, you must think that's dirt cheap. But no actual, well, yeah, very cheap, very cheap for me. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, it will cost that much, but there's no actual number allocated yet. It's yeah. just... Um, on the website, on Virgin Galactic's website, it, it takes information and it says the tickets will cost more than $250,000. Right. But obviously they don't have something that passengers can actually go on yet because yeah. it's not safe enough or whatever. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, no specific a- number allocated yet. Mm-hmm. 39% of people surveyed by a CNBC with a net worth over $5 million would buy a ticket at that price point of $250,000 though. So, that's pretty cool. What, over what net worth? Over $5 million. Really? Yeah. So, so they said that they would buy wow. a ticket because it's like once you, I think once you're worth five million dollars, you could fork out two hundred fifty k for a once in a lifetime flight to space kind of thing. But that's only that's only. I'm like, not sure if I would. That's only them saying that they would as well. So okay. like oh, yeah, when I'd, it comes I'd down probably, to I'd it, I probably say I would. Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes, yeah, <laughs> if you had five million dollars, yeah. Do you have five million dollars? No. Just a random question. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Just wasn't sure how well those Tesla shares have been but doing. But do I have more than five million dollars? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you asked that and it just only worked if it you had exactly five million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> like they just said, no, I've got ten million. Um, so yeah, the uh, getting into the getting into the financials okay. and the uh, stock price. Yeah. Um, Virgin was listed under the SPAC IPOA. Yes. Which is Chamath's company, yes. Social Capital. We like Chamath. We like Chamath. Say his last name. <laughs> <laughs> Say his last name now right I, now. Pally Hepatitis, but nice. <laughs> We're gonna put the spelling right there. <laughs> Boom, got him. I'm just saying it how I say it every time now. It's probably not even right. <laughs> I'm expecting you to study it for next time because I'm definitely gonna be asking again. Um, <laughs> recurring theme, recurring theme. Yeah. Inside joke. It's um so it changed to SPCE. Yes. On the 25th of October 2019. At the yep. time, it was priced at eleven dollars and seventy nine cents. Yeah. Uh, I bought it in. Uh, December 2019, mm-hmm. which was two months after that. Mm-hmm. Well, less than two. I bought it two, less than two months after that for nine dollars twenty. Oh, so it had gone. It had gone down a little bit. Nice. And the current price is thirty five dollars ten. 
uh, with all times high at, at um, all time highs at fifty four dollars and thirty thirty four cents. Yeah, true. Uh, on, that was on the fifth of Feb uh, yes. this year, so that was when everything was just going nuts. Those were good times. Those were good times. <laughs> I remember. I remember back then. <laughs> yeah, the like, of yeah, up five percent in one day. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> nice. I think the most was like eight percent in one day, and just every day, two percent today, every day for a month, yeah. and then just big crash. Anyway, um, we won't we won't dwell on that too much. So the current market uh, cap is eight point four five billion. Okay. Um, the revenue for the December 2020 reported period was 238k. <laughs> nice. I'm not sure how they made that, <laughs> no. but apparently they made it okay. uh, with a loss of 644 million. Okay. Um, so that's a profit margin of negative 270,000. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so you know, <laughs> um, con- contrast that against SpaceX, which is still private. Mm-hmm. It made two billion dollars in revenue. Really? In the, in the same period. So, yeah, uh, it must have been from the Starlink selling its internet services or whatever. Yep, makes sense. Um, so, of course, it actually takes a long time to have a ship that's ready for passenger flight. Of course. Um, and they've been doing a lot more successful test flights and have taken off and landed without issues. And Richard Branson will be testing it himself soon enough to wow. show his confidence in the idea, obviously. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I think in, in conclusion, I think Virgin's yes. um, very far from being profitable. Yes. Yeah. Because, or being a realistic investment, because mm-hmm. they obviously have to take a lot of like there's a lot of testing and stuff that has to go Are through. Are you saying it. it's not a value stock? Yeah, oh, well, pro- probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Undervalued is my rating, my official rating. No, it's not. Um, so yeah, they have to actually make a a ticket sale. Okay. Like, oh, they have to do all this stuff before they even make a ticket sale. Yes. Um, and then they've got to do all this stuff to actually get it to profitability. Obviously, yes, after that, yeah. so after that, they have to actually start looking at the business and it's say, true. But oh, it's a good well. idea. Yeah. So it seems like a potential leader in the consumer space though for what you can actually buy definitely top three um definitely top three <laughs> and um well i don't even know if elon's doing yeah pass- i don't know what he's doing anyway <laughs> that's um that's that segment perfect what do you what do you think about that i've actually got <laughs> i've actually forgotten that i'm doing the next segment straight after that because okay this is this is not my I've got three segments. Let's say that. <laughs> um, so. But two of them have to be together. Is that what you're saying? Two of them have to be together. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I'm actually going to jump into this, Ooh. which is, <laughs> ooh, this, that's my favorite thing. All right. So I'm going to jump into this. I like being this far away. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's very good. Um, <laughs> so Kathy Wood has a, has uh, a um, Kathy Wood, Kathy Wood. She is an investor and she, she would, she would, <laughs> <laughs> um, Kathy's Wood. She has a, uh, she has an arc, one of her arc funds, which uh, is a space yeah. exploration. She does. That's right. Space exploration and innovation ETF. Mm-hmm. So, um, I went and had a look at it. Did you? And yes, I did. Indeed. So this isn't part of the last segment. It is. Um, <laughs> I thought it would be okay. Okay, okay, go. When I made it initially, yeah. But um, but I realized that she doesn't hold um, oh space or anything like that. SPCE. Oh, so I actually thought it was super terrible how little they actually have space relevant holdings in that ETF. In that ETF, yeah. I don't think it's. I think it's just a name for an ETF, but yeah. it's not. It's not that space relevant. So right. Um, they don't seem to be actually investing in the companies that are launching rockets or building spaceships. Right. What was in it? So it's actually got, here we go. I've got the top 15 holdings here. Okay. And I'm going to go through them and kind of what they do. Okay. So there's one called Trimble Link, which... Um, Trimble. Yes, which is their biggest holding. That does um, data work for agriculture and infrastructure. And it also does some mapping and surveying of geospatial areas. Ah, there it is. Okay. So, right. I mean, by geospatial, it literally like surveying. Um, so I'm not sure if they're... Well, they're just, they just saw that it's got spatial in it. And yeah, space, it in. space, spatial. Yeah, that's, similar, good. that's good. Similar words. Mm-hmm. Um, then next is PRNT, which is a 3D printing ETF. That's the next biggest holding. Really? Yeah. Um, an ETF in an ETF? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that's what, that's what a few of them do. That's what a few ETFs do. Okay. Um, the next one is Iridium Communications. This yeah. one's more relevant. They've got 66 active satellites used for communications. Mm-hmm. So that one's actually kind of legit. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one's Kratos Defense and Security. They make some really cool unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs, which are used for US by the US military for stealth bombings. Nice. So um, I guess planes are similar to space stuff. Yeah, they're getting close. They're getting close. They are well, they are drones. So yeah, you know. 
Uh, next one is L3 Harris Technologies. This one's cool. This is an Australian company listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Really? And it does LiDAR and provides communication oh. systems for aircraft carriers. Nice. And um, L3 to, Harris. Yeah, so to, it um, guides in planes as well as other air traffic management yep. control systems. Yep. So that one... Um, I guess is also kind of similar if they're providing LIDAR and like that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's still like, is that is that space, like, you know, space exploration? It's certainly not specifically space, is it? No. No. But um, uh, the next one's Lockheed Martin, who I've found out pretty much make everything military-based. Cool. Um, they've got fighter jets, helicopters, trains, laser weapons, targeting <laughs> systems, Australian Australia's warships, yeah. um, armoured ground vehicles, missiles... Um, all sorts of things. Wow. So, yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, cool. And the next couple are JD Logistics, Komatsu. Um, they've got Amazon in there. Oh. Um, which I don't think Amazon holds Blue Origin. Like, I think no. it's Jeff's separate yeah. project, so I don't know why that's there. Yeah. Um, Boeing, which makes sense. Boeing is probably yeah. one of the most relevant ones. Yes. But they've, it's all the way down the list kind yeah. of thing. They've got Alphabet, which is Google. Yeah. Um. Spirit Aero Systems. I'm sure Google have someone thinking about it. True. They've probably got a 2,000 person team thinking about it <laughs> and not producing anything. Yeah. Because like they've just got so it's much having money. having a lot of fun. Having a lot of fun. <laughs> and Netflix, which... Netflix. Completely well, irrelevant. it's probably space related shows on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, Space Force. Do if you, you see so that? So if you think space is going to grow in popularity, people will watch more um, episodes you about can, space you and can then really people try. will watch more Netflix and then they'll tell people about it and then they'll get more Netflix subscriptions. Amazing. And then the, the price of Netflix stock will go up. So that makes a lot of sense. It's probably because of Space Force with Steve Carell. Did you, um, I don't know what that is. It's, um, it's Steve Carell made the terrible show. Oh, the movie. You told me about it's it. It's a movie. No, it's a show. What? Is it a show? Yeah. Did you only watch the first episode? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, he's, um, Yes, he's 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 in charge of like a division of the military, which is like a space. It's called the Space Force. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I have seen that. Did yeah. I tell you to watch it? Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah, it was really bad. Terrible. Yeah. Um, terrible. Yeah. 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 It was kind of. I don't know. It was kind of funny. It was but, not. I wouldn't say terrible. No, you just did. I would say it's it's kind of bad. Okay. <laughs> like I don't know. I watched the whole episode, so yeah. If it was terrible, I would have turned it off halfway through. Okay. So anyway, the point of this is that the ETF seems to be. Mostly based on military technology, mm -hmm. some slight emphasis on some space relevant companies, yeah, and a lot of emphasis just on general innovation. True. So I guess it's a, a similar to Arc K or whatever. So anyway, this is Arc X. Um, Arc by X. The way. Cool. Um, yeah. So the ETF listed on the first of March this year at twenty dollars and thirty cents, and it's grown one point five eight percent to uh, twenty dollars and sixty two cents. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah, there you go. True. Nice. That's that one. Very good. Shall I start? Yeah, what have you got for me? All right, I'm going to start with the car. Oh, I like this. Okay. So, um, uh, so Ford released uh, probably about uh, three weeks ago now. So good. Here we go. <laughs> I'm so keen. I know what it is. <laughs> the Ford F-150 Lightning. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so this is their response to the Tesla Cybertruck and... The um, Hummer EV, Hummer yeah. are doing one, GMC, Hummer EV. Yeah. And there's a third one, which I'll talk about. Um, and so, a bit controversial because uh, I would say that the, the market for F-150s, particularly in the US, are people who might not care a lot about the environment. That might be a really rude generalization. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's relatively accurate. You are right. So, <laughs> if I could throw it back to a Top Gear episode. Yep. Uh, I think it literally was a Top Gear episode. Okay. Where, um, not Grand Tour, I mean. Yeah, okay, right. Um, where they were, the original cast were saying um, that fuel efficiency was the 34th concern <laughs> of American pickup um, buyers. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. So, Good statistic. Yeah. So, that was, yeah. That, I mean, it's just so irrelevant. I that, think it's true. Yeah. Um, and so... For that reason... That was a number of years ago. It has so. to be a good yeah. truck in itself. Yeah. And so I'll give you some of the features and uh, you can tell me whether you think it's a good truck. Okay. So essentially what they need to do here is outdo a normal F-150 for anyone to even consider buying it. Yeah. Because um, the inherent loss of noise and grunt and that kind of thing is going to be 
a pretty big negative for, I think, a lot of the buyers. True. So, so it's a fully electric pickup, if you didn't pick, uh, pick up on that. So, um, it's an F-150. It's called Lightning. Um, and they're, they're making them all in a super crew body. Uh, so what that means is, um, it's like four doors, uh, and a, a, a tray bed on the back. And so, um, one thing that's standard in every model, uh, or every, um, version is independent rear suspension, oh. um, which in a car we take for granted, but in a lot of their F-150s, they do leaf springs in the back. They're really moving up in the world. And Fast so, leaf springs. <laughs> sorry? Fast leaf springs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These um, Americans, what will they think of next? <laughs> um, uh, okay, cool. So um, it it comes as standard as a dual motor. Oh, cool! Uh, which means dual motor. Yeah. they're all all wheel drive, um, which I think is really awesome. And so it has four drive modes: normal drive, sport, tow slash haul, which is kind of like the American word for tow. Yes. Um, and off road mode. And so, in regards to the lineup, there's four different versions as well. Um, so, there's the um, F-150 Pro, which um, you may initially attribute to being like pro, meaning like top level. Yeah, okay. But pro just means professional, which means commercial, which means uh, base level. Okay, they haven't done that right. Yeah, I was confused as well. Yeah. Um, and so, well, I guess it means like if you call your mate, be like, oh, I just bought a Lightning Pro. Like, they're like, oh, sick. That must yeah, be so that's good. that's true. It does sound like it's a good and thing. And then they get in the car and it's just all cloth and plastic. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway. No no fancy buttons. No. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's um it's 40,000 USD uh, when it comes out. And the range is 370 kilometers, which isn't too bad. 40,000 seems like expensive for an American car. Like they usually have lower prices for... Things. I guess that's I guess that's pretty standard. Uh, it's I think forty thousand is pretty good. I was having a look at previous prices, and you can get a uh, twenty twenty one version for somewhere around the thirty k mark. Yeah. So yeah, a little cheaper. Um, but forty k is not too much to pay. Yeah. For for pretty good performance. And are they going to have the electric alongside the petrol still? I don't know. That's a really good question. Yeah. Very yeah. good question. We'll uh, we'll type that in the comments below. True. Um, torque figure is really good. Yep. It's got a little over a thousand newton meters. Yeah. Um, which is awesome. That's very good. And it tows 3.5 tons, which is good. And what I'll do at the end here is I've got a table, um, to break down the key metrics between the lightning, a 2021 version, and then the Hummer, the Cybertruck and another uh, one. So yeah, we can cool. just easily compare. Cause I can, I can rattle these figures off and they won't make sense until we compare them. Yeah. That's cool. So anyway. So that's the pro version, 40K, XLT, 55K USD. Again, uh, XLT, that's a very forward thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they kind of roll these different versions out on all different platforms. Um, uh, I put all of these prices in USD, as I said before, because you can't just convert it straight to Australian dollars because of all the taxes. Cars and don't really work and, like that, yeah. particularly in Australia. And so. also because of our mainly US audience. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, with the XLT, um, you get an interior work surface. So what that means is, uh, you can get this from the center console, you can kind of flip down this flat surface, which goes over the top of your shifter yep. and then you can put your laptop on it and you can work uh, there. Ah, true. Yes. Um, and so also the car has a 4G LTE hotspot. Oh, um, so that's you, cool. Yeah. You can use that. Um, that's in the XLT version cause this is for like a project manager. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, it's got 360 degree camera, so you can kind of like see all the way around the car if you're parking it and stuff. Yeah. It's also great for those people that want to tow a caravan or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, have the Wi-Fi hook up and, yeah. and just stop anywhere, you know, that kind of thing. True. That's very true. Um, okay. So the next one is the Lariat. Um, Lariat. I haven't heard of that before. Yeah. I think it is a Ford term as well. Right. Um, I'm sure it has some sort of like historical meaning or something. Yeah. Um, you get 20 inch rims as opposed to 18, which you had on the previous two. Um, at this point, you step up to a leather trimmed, heated, ventilated seat. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we step up in range. So we go from um, 370 kilometer range to 480. 370 kilometers? Yes. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, right. sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah 370 yeah. kilometers. Yeah. Um, yeah. 370 kilometers. And we step up to 480 kilometer range. That's heaps better. In yeah. the Lariat. Yeah. 
Uh, you get a twin panel moon roof. Oh, uh, yeah. They love saying moon roof. They don't say sunroof in America. Yeah. That's something I literally <laughs> learned that this week. Oh, really? They don't say sunroof. They say moon roof. Yeah. How weird is that? That is very strange. It's like you're not... What are you opening that at night for? <laughs> that's, not, <laughs> that's not useful then. <laughs> it's very true. Um, and we also step up in horsepower. So from 4.30 in the Lariat, we go to 5.60 horsepower. Very nice. And you get f- uh, 4.5 tons of towing. Uh, and at this point, it's in the mid four seconds to 100 kilometers an hour. How much, uh, how much torque is on that if you get extra? Same, you get an extra ton. Same torque. Same torque? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, platinum. Uh, which is 90,000 USD. Uh, you get 22-inch rims, so it goes up two inches again. Big, big, big rims. And you get like a fancy sound system and a bunch of like nice, you know, like aluminium-looking trim and that kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. So that's the Platinum. Did you mention that the Ford F-150 is the highest-selling car in America? No, but that's true. Yeah, there yeah. you go. It's a fun fact. There you go. Um, okay, so one of the biggest benefits that I can see, well, no, one of the most practical benefits that I can see with this being an EV is that it has a front trunk. Uh, a frunk. Yes. Yeah, nice. And the benefit of that is, when I was watching some reviews, and the really big benefit is when you own a pickup, as American would say... Uh, oh, you don't have anywhere secure There's to nowhere store your secure stuff. to store anything of substance. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so um, the front trunk is 400 liters, which is similar to a Master 2's boot. Okay. So it's not huge, yeah. but it's something. It's not just like a little tiny well, it's better than briefcase. Having an engine in the way. Exactly. Yeah. So you can fit uh, two golf bags in there. Um, and it you've got up to 180 kilograms of payload in that front trunk. Well, that will be very good for my next golf game. Exactly. Um, so in moving into the interior, um, it's got a five and a half inch uh, big like portrait touchscreen. Yeah. Kind of like the early. Did you say five and a half? 15 and a half. Oh, 15 and a half. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, right. no, that might have been me. I, yeah. I probably said five. No, uh, 15 and a half inch touch screen. And so um, I think all the earlier Teslas have had the portraits. Yeah. I think now they're just moving into uh, the landscape again. Yeah. And I think the, the reasoning behind that is because autonomous driving is going to be in the near future. And so they want you to be able to watch movies and stuff like that <laughs> yeah, on yeah, it, yeah. whereas you can't watch it in portrait. Yeah. Um, so that was their rationale anyway. So speaking of autonomous, uh, they Ford have their version and it's called Blue Cruise. Blue Cruise. I don't know why it's called Blue Cruise, but it is. Um, it's their hands-off autopilot. Okay. Uh, which is pretty cool. So it's got a front-facing camera, a bunch of radar sensors. That'll just be like um, highway mode though. Exactly. Or whatever, it? Yeah. And so it's uh, you can use hands-free mode, but only in specific hands-free blue zones. Yeah. yeah. And so there's 160,000 kilometers of that on North American roads. And when you're like on the GPS in the car, if you're on one of those blue roads, it lets you take your hands off. Yeah. If you're not, you can't. Um, so, I mean, that's cool. Like, very, very generous of it. Yeah. <laughs> to let you take your hands off. <laughs> well, like I, my mum's car used to have um, that feature. Yeah. And yeah, you had to like... Touch oh, the Corolla. S- yeah. Yeah. You had to touch the steering wheel like every five seconds. Yeah. Otherwise yeah. it would like boop, turn off and then... Yeah. Yeah. Start, if you didn't, start breaking on you or something. Well, yeah, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in regards to the charging, uh, there's no Ford specific charging network, as, as you'd yeah. sort of imagine. Yeah. So, um, they are, uh, jumping on the back of already established networks. Yeah. And so they have a Ford, uh, they have an app called Ford Pass app. Okay. And this is kind of the app that pairs with the car. Um, so you can use it to, if you have the app on your phone and you're one of four users connected to a car, uh, it automatically unlocks the doors as you walk up, um, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, which is cool. On the app, you can see where all the charging stations are. Um, at your house with a normal 240 volt um, power outlet, um, it charges 23 kilometers per hour. Is that is that the um, the same in America? I no, thought they no, had no, a different no. voltage. Yeah, they have 120 or something or 110. Okay, right. Yeah. Oh, but that's how much you could do it if you had 20, 240. Yes, with yeah. 240. Yeah. Yeah, with 240 volts, you can do 23 kilometers per hour. Okay, yeah. Uh, and so it's a total of 20 hours for the extended range model. So, but with the extended range model, it comes included in the package, a big 80 amp charge station that you put at your house. Okay. Big thing that goes on the wall. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, you can then charge it in eight hours. Okay. So less than half the time. So you would need to get that... Uh, Professionally installed. Yeah, be- yeah. Well, you would need to get it to use the car. Yes, because but it comes with the car. Yeah, okay. All right, but it ought to... Yeah, okay. But it doesn't come with the lower two spec. So with the lower two... You can w- work for four hours and you can sit at home for 20 hours. <laughs> well, it doesn't take 20 hours because they don't have the same range. Uh, yes, they true, have like a two hundred or 370 kilometer range. So yep. it would take, I don't know, 14 hours. Okay. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. So it's still a long time. Yeah. So you're still going to want to buy one. Yeah. Anyway. And then I don't know how much they cost, but at that point you might be worth it. Although worth if you get home, like if you're thinking about it in terms of getting home, mm. you know, if you were working exactly eight hours and you could get home in zero minutes. Yeah, technically it would work. Yeah. Mm. Or if you have an hour commute or whatever. Yeah, also if then you Then it's don't exactly 14 hours until... And if you have an hour commute, then you don't need 370 Yeah, that's true. You don't kilometers. need it topped up all the way, do you? No. no okay, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is next level thinking right here. I like this. This is good. Um, um, okay. Doing, doing maths. So live. on the actual on the actual truck, there's a bunch of power outlets. Uh just sockets so you can plug stuff in on the work site and stuff. And so it provides a maximum of just under nine um, kilowatts. Um, so I That's ha- cool. I haven't really thought about that before. Yeah, that could be really useful for charging all your tools when you... Well, I thought, well, that's an arbitrary number. What does that actually mean? So I went and looked up an average clothes dryer. How, much, how <laughs> many kilowatts do they take? Yeah. How many kilowatt hours, sorry. And... Um, the maximum that I could see, it was a range. The maximum was five. So that fits within the 9.6. So I guess you could run a, you could run your clothes dry in the back of your ute <laughs> yeah. at work. Yeah, yeah. And it a would, full size one. Yeah, full size. <laughs> That's he's funny. Washing with what, yeah. clothes dry. Yeah. Um, uh, so then moving on from that, but still related, uh, Ford have a thing called Ford Intelligent Backup Power. And what that is, is um, they profess that they can power your home for three days on a fully charged battery. Yes. Have you okay. heard this? Uh, I haven't heard this, but okay. this is cool. So I looked into it a little bit more. Two way, so it's like two-way, it's a two-way charging uh, uh, Yeah, so system. it's like, uh, yeah, it goes back and forth. So like, yeah, you charge the car and then your house goes down and it can go, like you can plug your stuff into the car um, and it can run the house. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, but like, what does that mean? Because like, does that mean you can just use your lights and the TV or like how much power can you use? Well, um, they base that figure on 30 kilowatt hours of use per day. Um, and I was like, well, okay, is that actually reasonable? And I went on and Osgrid, which is our local um, like electricity provider here in Newcastle, Australia, where we live. Um, Don't tell them where we live. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to um, have stalkers. <laughs> They uh, they said the average daily power use last year was um, eighteen point two kilowatt hours per day. Okay, so yeah, so, so that's it's, actually, it's actually really reasonable. reasonable yeah. yeah, so you could be really using some power. Yeah. and still be like if you used fifty percent more than the average person, you'd yeah. still be fine. Yeah, that's cool. So I think that's really cool. Um, I talked about phone as a key, which is you know you have your phone in your pocket, it unlocks the door automatically. You don't yeah. have to press anything. That's nice. It's got a bunch of other really interesting um, features. So um, they've all got names. So the first one's called Pro Trailer Hitch Assist, and this is auto control of the steering wheel, the throttle, and the brake to align the hitch ball with the um, the trailer, yeah, that's the trailer cool. coupler, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's um, something that's a big problem for people with trailers. Big. That's like very common. Yeah, I think so too. Because um, you always have to have a camera and then you're always trying to work mm-hmm. it out. And, then and if you you're can't on your see own, the depth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you've got to get out and physically move the trailer anyway yep. every time because it just never works right. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then the next thing, which is an issue, particularly when... So for us, we were doing a bit of car racing and when you put different cars on the trailer and when you put the car in a different position on the trailer, it changes the weight on the tow ball. Yeah. And cars or suspensions and tow balls have a maximum weight. Yeah. And so... There's a thing called smart hitch on this one, which measures the tongue weight of the trailer okay. on the actual hitch. Um, and it provides a guidance to better distribute the weight that's on the great. trailer. That's great. That's really cool. Which is cool. And that's kind of all through the app, which is connected to the car. Because that's that's like a safety thing as well. Because like if you have the car really far forward mm-hmm. and then you hit the right bump or whatever and start mm-hmm. losing control, you mm-hmm. know, it's not going to correct itself. Well, the, way of, uh, the, the trade-off that we always had when we were towing was that if you put um, the car... With the engine furthest to the back of the trailer. Yes, okay. Then it's the least amount of weight on the back of the car. Good for suspension and stuff like that. But the actual force 
when you get a bit of a wobble, yeah, is more, is heaps more because it's way out. It's of, like the yeah. pendulum effect, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you flip the car around and put the car way up on the front of the trailer with the engine right towards the back of the car, then you've got too much weight on the trailer. Yeah. So that's where it's kind of helping you make those decisions. Yeah, for sure. Um, which is really cool. And with an MR2, you have to go backwards onto the trailer to make the engine forward. Exactly. That's what we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so uh, what else do they have? They also have um, tro- Pro Trailer Backup Assist, which I don't actually understand this. I was looking at a demo, but that doesn't make any sense. Um, when you've got a trailer on, instead of you actually reversing the trailer, you can turn this knob in the direction that you want the trailer to go and it'll control the steering wheel and make the trailer go that direction. Okay. Okay. Cause, and, and that's, that's useful, I guess. Well, that's useful if you don't understand how the steering wheel works. Yeah. Cause you always, cause you obviously have to go the opposite way. Exactly. To make the trailer go but if you, one way. If you just, yeah. But yeah, if you, I don't think you yeah. need a knob for it, but anyway, it's probably probably just to you, you probably shouldn't be driving a trailer if you don't know which way the steering wheel makes it go i think so too yeah <laughs> <laughs> um uh it has uh it has trailer reverse guidance so it has some mirrors i don't know if cars other cars have this it's really smart it has mirrors on the uh, sorry it has cameras on the side mirrors facing back yeah 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 and it it um blends them together and so you get like a really good picture of where the trailer is at the back on the screen. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's really awesome. And you can kind of see the car and the trailer in the whole image. Yeah. Um, it has onboard scales. So it measures the payload that you put in the car to check that you're not over maximum payload. But then you can zero it out and then you can put like another thing in it. And so it becomes like a set of scales. Yeah, that's cool. Which is kind of cool. Like yeah. uh, if you're on a job site and you need to know how heavy something is, you can zero out your... Um, payload, yeah. put something in it, and then you can see how heavy it is. And think about cooking when you're camping, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need 30 grams of salt. <laughs> put that on the back of the truck. Zero out the lightning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, it has a, this is definitely a gimmick. It has a tailgate work, uh, um, sorry, tailgate work surface. So it's got like a, so, you know, you, you flip the tailgate down. Yeah. And on the inside of it, it has like a flat work surface with features such as clamp pockets. So you can put a piece of timber on it and clamp the timber uh, yeah, yeah. without going onto the actual outside of the um, tailgate. Yeah. It's got a ruler. Okay. Yep. Um, it's got a mobile device holder. Yep. <laughs> it has a cup holder and it has a small item storage area. Okay. Well, I guess it's better than not using that space. I agree. It's better than just a flat area. Yeah. Um, it has enhanced lighting, which is really cool. So it's got 360 degree lighting. Okay. So it lights all the way around the car. Oh, and like side skirt yeah, lighting? Well, yeah. Well, hi- uh, it looked higher than that. It's as if, if I was standing next to the car, I'd have light on me. I'm just picturing uh, one of those original like Need for Speed games where you had the neon purple lights oh, yeah, around, yeah, yeah, around yeah, a really yeah. cool Mitsubishi Eclipse <laughs> or whatever. Oh, I think they're from <laughs> high. I think it's from the top of the actual cab because uh, it also lights the full bed and everything. Yeah, okay. Which yeah. is so helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can control that using the Ford Pass app so you can stand outside the car and just turn the bed lights on or whatever you want. So it's kind of cool. Um, and so I'll just talk about a comparison with the different competitors. So there's really um, four competitors um, for the Lightning. And the competitors are the current um, Platinum, so the current 2021 F-150, the Cybertruck, the GMC Hummer, and then there's a, new, there's a new car coming out, which I'd never heard of before. And the brand's called Rivian. Uh, Rivian, yeah. You yeah, have? Yeah. And the model is uh, R1T. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there were pictures of that before there were pictures of the Cybertruck. Like there were, okay. there's always been concepts for it. For gotcha. Ages. Um, and so they're the main competitors. So I'll just go through them really quick. So power, uh, the Lightning has 560 horsepower. This is all in horsepower. Uh, the current F-150 has only got 400. And I'm comparing, I'm comparing Platinum to Platinum here. Okay, yeah. Because the current F-150, you can buy the Raptor version. Oh, uh, yeah. But yeah. I'm just comparing Platinum to Platinum. Because yeah. like, say I'm a guy and I just buy Platinum every year. Yeah. Um, what am I getting for my money? So it is 400 horsepower currently, 560 with the Lightning. So that's yeah. a big jump. Huge increase. Uh, the Tesla Cybertruck, 800. Yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, that's got triple motors though, you know. Uh, yeah, that's true. This is the triple motor. The, uh, oh, the Ford, the Ford has triple the, motor as well. No, no, sorry. This is the Tesla tri-motor. Yes, yeah, yeah. That I've yeah. got here, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, and then the Rivian has uh, 790 horsepower, Whoa. so really close. But it's also not 
real yet, is it? Well, no. I saw a video of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, so saw a video of a Nikola truck rolling down a hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's seen videos of everything, mate. <laughs> um, the GMT Hummer, 1,000 horsepower. Yeah, that's crazy, eh? Hey? Yeah. 1,000. Terrible website, though. You should see their website. Shocking. Yeah. That's like one of the, not to get too off track, but mm. one of the defense um, websites had white text on a white background. No. And you could only see... If you highlight it. Yeah, no, you can... Yeah, and you could only see um, the a little bit of white because they have a picture of a plane yeah. in the sky. Yeah. And so the white you couldn't see in t- and except for over the plane. Whoa. It was really funny. Jeez. But yeah, anyway. Zero to 100. The lightning, 4.5 seconds approximately. Hasn't yeah. been... Calcul- like it hasn't been done yet. Uh, the current platinum is 5.1, so it's definitely quicker. Cybertruck, somewhere around 2.9. Yep. Uh, the Rivian is three seconds, and the Hummer is also three seconds. And the Model S Plaid? 1.9 or a bit less, maybe. Even. Yeah, cool. Good yeah. comparison there. Um, and so talk. Now, I, I just would d- put a disclaimer here. The figures I'm about to give you don't make sense to me, but <laughs> okay. I looked at multiple websites and they were all quoting the same figures. Okay. So I think all I can, the only thing I can come up with is that they're all wrong. Okay. Because this can't be true. All right. So the lightning, which I think is correct, is 1,500 newton meters. Yes. Awesome. That's a, quite a lot. It's quite impressive. Current one has 555 five, five newton meters. Yes. Um, so tripling. It's, it's double. Yeah. What? Five... Did you say one? You said one thousand five hundred. No, no, one thousand fifty. One thousand and fifty. Did right. I say one thousand five hundred? Yeah. Okay. That's all right there. Um, Cybertruck, one thousand four hundred. Totally makes sense. Four hundred more newton meters of torque, um, or three fifty more. So it's going to be a bit faster. Whatever. Totally makes sense. The Rivian, which is only three seconds to a hundred, has fourteen thousand newton meters of torque. Fourteen thousand newton compared meters. to fourteen hundred. Yeah. Of the Tesla truck. Fourteen. 14,000 newton meters of torque. Yeah. That doesn't, so, like, that doesn't seem possible. So, d- like, yeah, 14,000. So, th- the Range Rover, the, like, the 2013 Range Rover Sport, which mm. I wouldn't know anything about, mm. has 660 newton meters of torque. Yes. Which means that if a Rivian has 14,000 newton meters of torque, yeah. it's the same as 100 Range Rovers or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, that's, that's I know. insane. It doesn't make yeah. any sense. Or, but you know, the thing that 40. almost backs that up is that on a completely separate website and a different car, the Hummer allegedly has 15,600 newton meters of torque. <laughs> 15,000? <laughs> they must, maybe they're putting in, uh, what is it, um, pound? It's not pound feet. I converted feet. it from pound feet. Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe they, because I was thinking like, oh, they've put in the wrong units or they've put in an extra zero. It's the extra zero. It has to be But I don't know how everyone's done the extra zero. It has to be 1,400 and 1,500, sure. I agree, because it makes total sense. I mean, if we're wrong, let us know. Well, I Write think us we're a review. wrong. I'm saying that I think I'm wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong because it doesn't make sense. Okay, towing capacity. Uh, the Lightning, um, four and a half tons. Current F-150, almost six and a half tons. So you are losing two tons, basically, of towing capacity. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Tesla Cybertruck is six and a half tons. It's actually exactly the same as the current F-150, which makes me think that that was their target. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they've apparently achieved it, so that's really impressive. Uh, the Rivian is five tons, which is more than the Platinum, less than the Cybertruck. And the Hummer is totally unknown. I can't find it anyway. Okay. Probably because it doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, maximum payload is only 800 kilograms. That's including all storage spaces in the Lightning. Uh, and that's the Platinum model. Um, if you get the lower spec commercial model, you can actually put 900 kilos in it. Okay. Um, so it's a little bit more. Which maybe seem, It doesn't seem like a lot. Like, no, it's not. Honest, it's, like it's not. Um, so the platinum, the current platinum F one hundred and fifty is fifteen hundred. So the maximum payload of um, maximum payload of um, every storage um, compartment in the vehicle is just over eight hundred. With the commercial version of the vehicle, the Pro, it's closer to nine hundred. Different springs or something, I assume. Um, the current platinum F one hundred and fifty is fifteen hundred. So you lose almost half your payload ability. Yeah. Um, Tesla Cybertruck again makes me think that they've, they've put this up against the current F-150 because their payload is supposed to be 1600 which is really good it's literally double that of yeah. the Lightning yeah um, and then the Rivian's only 800 as well so that's it's uh, pretty low and the Hummer is unknown <laughs> yeah 
Uh, okay, so range. This is a good one. Uh, the current Lightning, sorry, the F-150 Lightning, 480 kilometers in the Platinum. The current F-150, uh, obviously just using its internal combustion engine. Yeah. Is 1,600 kilometers. Wow. Pretty yeah. amazing. Big yeah. tank, I assume. Yeah. Um, and the Tesla Cybertruck, 800 kilometers, which is really impressive. Yeah. Um, that's similar to my car. And uh, the Rivian is 650, which is pretty good, actually. And the Hummer is 570, which is pretty average. Um, price, all in USD. Ford Lightning, 90,000 for the Platinum version. Current Platinum, 58,000. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. It's 30 grand. Yeah. 30, 32 grand. Very big difference. Yes. Um, Tesla Cybertruck, only 70 grand. Yeah, right. Cheap. But is that the single motor? No, that's the tri motor. That's the tri motor. Yeah. Okay. Pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, th- they're going to take away that whole. That's the expected price. Yeah. Um, but that's impressive. They're going to be taken away from the um, big time. Yeah, the Ford's market there. Uh, even the Rivian, seventy-five grand, and the Hummer, one hundred and six thousand. Yeah, wow. Big yeah. money. Uh, estimated delivery: uh, the Lightning twenty twenty two, Cybertruck twenty twenty two, Rivian twenty twenty two, and the Hummer twenty twenty three. So just add two years onto all of those, and that'll be the actual delivery. Yeah, yeah, legit. <laughs> that's wild, eh? Um, so that is uh, that's the Ford F one fifty Lightning. I think it's a cool car. I would like to see one. I wouldn't own one. I'd own a Cybertruck. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I would I would also own a Cybertruck. Yeah. Yeah. I also wouldn't use it to be a ute, really. So yeah. it just would you be just cool. use it to be big and yeah. in everyone's way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take up half the street everywhere. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, just take it. Who is it? Hello. Hello. Identify do you yourself. HQLA. Do you have a question for HQLA? Ah, uh, yes, I do. Give uh, it. Give it to me. Where, I have one million dollars <laughs> in cash. Yeah. How do I hide it? So, um, the oh, first thing you're going to want to do is buy Dogecoin um, <laughs> at, at the highest possible. Put in put in eighty cents yeah. for that one, uh, and then you want to convert it to Bitcoin. And then and then buy and buy gold. Yeah, and then you and then yeah, and then you want to buy physical obviously because it's safe. Physical gold bars. Yeah. Then you want to bury them in the backyard. Yeah. Uh, and don't tell anyone. Yeah. And watch out for that stormwater drain from um, Charlestown Square because <laughs> it'll wash it all away. Um. Anyway. Uh, very. Good. Okay. So. Okay. I've got something which I know more about than space. Uh, and that is... <laughs> Anything. <laughs> Ooh, look who's a savage today. <laughs> it is exchange traded funds, oh, ETFs. But what are they? That's what I'm going to be talking about perfect. today. Oh, I'm okay, going to be cool. talking about what they are. Okay, perfect. So should we preface this with like why we're talking about this stuff? Yeah, so I think it's really important. One thing that I've noticed is that we're getting... You know, we, we do have a lot of new listeners. Yeah. And the stories that I get are that they're not particularly financially literate. So... Yeah. It's really, I think it's really good to kind of, you know, this is, this is a bit more educational. This is more yeah. educational than what we've been doing in the past. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll be pretty pretty good info for people. Yeah. So um, We just don't want to make any assumptions. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we, you know, the last time that we got told that we had a term that someone didn't know, mm-hmm. we gave a five second explanation of IPOs and then we were on our way. You exactly. Know? Um, so yeah, an exchange traded fund is a so it's an ETF mm-hmm. is a collection of stocks which you're able to buy and sell easily in one transaction. Okay. Um, so exchange, I'm going to break down the words. Exchange traded means that they're available exactly like a stock is. Yeah. So there's liquidity in the ETF market, mm-hmm. uh, which means that you should be able to buy and sell your ETFs. Mm-hmm. So that's it's about liquidity that um, exchange traded part. Mm-hmm. Um, What's an exchange? Well, an exchange is like the um, is like the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ or yeah. the Australian Stock Exchange, mm-hmm. the ASX. Mm-hmm. So an exchange is yeah, is where you go to buy and sell stocks. Mm-hmm. But now you can buy ETFs on there. As so well. it's kinda like the marketplace where you come together. Yeah. And the Australian one is called the ASX. Yeah. Yeah. Um and the there's two American ones, right? Yeah. So 
There's there's two Australian ones. Yeah. There's two. There's like a Newcastle um, based one or something. Uh, there's the Chai. Well, it's called Chai X or whatever. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it's um. And so there's two in the US. There's two in the US. Yeah. Uh, New York Stock Exchange and yep. Nasdaq. Yes. Um. You got, uh, like the Nikkei and like stuff like that for um. Mm-hmm. I think that's the Japanese one. Yeah. Um. But if you were just starting out, I suppose being aware of the ASX. And the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange would be a pretty good start. Pretty good start, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the next part of the word is fund. So, that means mm-hmm. it's a collection of assets. So, a fund is historically something that you would only be available to wealthy people. Yep. Um, so, there's there were mutual funds and private investment funds. Yep. And those assets were missing accessibility to the low-level investor. Yeah. But they were also missing liquidity mm-hmm. um, because it's something super private and, yeah. you know, yeah. um, exclusive. So, anyway, ETFs, ETFs will track something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so whether it's an index, an industry, a trend, um, they'll charge you fees as an ex- what's called an expense ratio. Mm-hmm. So the expense ratio is the fee is the yearly fee, mm-hmm. uh, and the benefit of an ETF is diversity. So if one company goes really really wrong, yeah, uh, you usually have a small piece of a hundred other companies, mm-hmm. and that can make up for that two hundred other companies, five hundred other companies. Yes, that um, makes a lot of sense. Depending on the ETF that you buy. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, they're all doing well and they make up for the loss. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, um, they're usually a lower cost than uh, buying individual companies. So if you wanted to buy all 100 of those companies, yep. you'd have to pay brokerage on each purchase yep. usually. And um, I mean, not, not as much now, but you usually pay more. Yep. Um, so in terms of portfolio allocation, we've got first up, I'm going to talk about index tracking, which is uh-huh. passively managed uh, ETFs. Okay. So... The number one way that ETFs work is by market cap, mm-hmm. usually. Like that's um that's the most common type of ETF. So that's referred to as an index tracking ETF. Mm-hmm. So when you're buying an ETF that operates by allocating the stocks by market cap, it's really important to go for the lowest op- cost option that you can get. Mm-hmm. Um, so what does that mean? The market cap is the total value of the market. That's uh, total value in the market of that one company, mm-hmm. right? So if all of it's all of the shares times the price of the share yep. uh, of that company. So yep. an ETF that tracks an index is going to hold shares based on their value in the market. Mm-hmm. So I know it's a little bit complicated, but um, so I'll get, I get a bit more specific. Mm-hmm. So the S&P 500 is an index which tracks the top 500 companies in the US. Yep. So in the S&P index, uh, there's 5.52% Apple, mm-hmm. 5.28% Microsoft, 3.87% Amazon. Mm-hmm. And the reason that, that that is, is because the total market cap of the US market is $49.1 trillion. Mm-hmm. And the total market cap of Apple is $2.13 trillion. Mm-hmm. So that's why it makes up 5.5% of the index, right? Mm-hmm. So there's uh, there's a couple of ways that it's purchased into. Um, Could you explain a little bit more about what an index is? Yeah. So the index is, so the S&P 500 is the total market uh, and it's it's like the the top five hundred companies. You can have in other the US. Index. You can have other. There are other indexes. Yeah, yeah. So it's, is it is it? Would you say it's like a topic and then just a list of companies within that particular? Yeah. So yeah, it's not industry. So you can't buy you can't buy directly into that index, but it's an index is typically yeah just a just a list of companies that yep. are um yeah. and the weighting is per their market cap per their market cap yeah so yeah. okay so the index is just a way to track mm-hmm. a centralized way to track the whole market yeah but you can't buy directly into that you have to buy an etf which tracks which the tracks index that. okay yeah so so some of the ways that you can buy those some of the ones the most popular ones on the u.s um stock exchange or the nyse and yeah new york stock exchange yeah um so spy which is managed by state street yep that one's got an expense ratio of 0.09%. Mm-hmm. Um, VOO, which is managed by Vanguard, that's got an expense ratio of 0.03, mm-hmm. which is the cheapest one that I've found because BlackRock's IVV is also an expense ratio of 0.03. Yeah, right. So in that scenario, you would buy the cheapest expense ratio mm-hmm. because all they're doing is just buying and selling like stocks based on market cap. So there's no skill that's going into that. Yeah. So the cheapest expense ratio is what you want there because mm-hmm. you don't want to be paying more for a brand correct because it doesn't matter like you correct. you're making yeah it's logically it makes sense to buy the lowest expense ratio mm-hmm. um so for all of our australian fans out over there yep um our indexes are called the all Lords mm-hmm. and the asx 200 mm-hmm. so um so the, the all Lords is the top 500 australian stocks yep and the asx 200 is the um top 200 aussie stocks mm-hmm. 
So uh, our, our top market caps at the moment at Commonwealth Bank, which is 8.9% of the index, a mm-hmm. bit more concentrated than the US. BHP, 7.1%. And CSL, which is 6.6%. Is Combank the largest cap? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, so it's yeah, it makes up 8.9% of it. Wow. Um, so CSL, wow. during the middle of that. the pandemic, CSL was about 8.5%, and that was the largest uh, market cap in Australia. Wow. So it's moved down two spots, but it is a health company. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so some of the main ETFs that track this are... You can go with IOZ by BlackRock, which mm-hmm. is expense ratio of 0.09. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit more expensive than our um, US, than the US like options. Mm-hmm. And then there's A200 by BetaShares, which I think is the cheapest uh, in Australia. Is he in the background? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Where'd he go? He's there. Oh, he's just standing there? No, he's going in the door. Oh, right. Okay. And then uh, the expense ratio on that one, 0.07. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry, we have a guess. But continue. No, no, no. I'm, I don't even know if anyone's here. <laughs> I'm just continuing <laughs> as though um, nothing's going on. Perfect. Yeah. You know, you know me. I just, I like motorbikes and dirt bikes and that kind of thing and <laughs> riding dirt bikes and <laughs> anime. So, um, so another way to, uh, to do portfolio allocation yeah. is um, actively managed. So that was okay. passively managed. Yep. Actively managed Just tracks the index. Yep, that makes sense. So, yeah, that's the opinion based on the fund manager, right? Yep. Um, so, yeah, that gives... It's, there are some ETFs that give you really good access to, um, like, a hedge fund uh, would. Like, you know, a hedge fund yeah. was typically something that was closed off, but now you can buy stuff like that with a um, with a really good ETF. Yeah. So, Kathy Wood's um, yes. ARC funds, which we were talking about before. Obviously, it gets a mention. Great example of this, you know. So you can buy into her fund. She allocates money um, to the stocks that she thinks are going to perform best for each category. Yeah. So there are a couple of key areas. There's ARK Innovation ETF, which is ARK K. Yep. Um, so that's Tesla, Zoom, Shopify, Coinbase, yep. stuff like that. Yeah. Then there's Autonomous Tech, which is ARK Q, mm-hmm. Tesla, Alphabet, a couple of other ones. Um, ARK F, which is FinTech. So you've got Square, Shopify, PayPal, Tencent, a yep. couple of other things like that. Mm-hmm. And the ARC funds have an expense ratio. All of them have an expense ratio of 0.75%, mm-hmm. which is significantly, significantly higher than a pa- like a passive one. Yeah. But that's because of how much trading there is with each fund. Mm-hmm. It's like you have to spend a lot of time. A lot of analysis. Continuing to, um, yeah, to roll over all the stocks. And like there's huge costs for them to continue like trading stuff and bringing in new stocks and all that kind of thing. Absolutely. So, um, so the next one, I want, next category of ETF I want to talk about is yes. leveraged and inverse. Okay. So... Uh, you can buy something called, uh, it's like, it's ticker is bear, B-E-A-R on the ASX. Mm-hmm. So that's a beta shares and it goes against the ASX 200. Mm-hmm. So for every dollar that the ASX goes up, you would lose a dollar. Yep. For every dollar the ASX goes down, you would make a dollar. Yeah. So that one's really cool for recession proofing your portfolio. Yeah, it's a good hedge. Especially if you're really worried that all your stocks are going to go down, but yep. you don't want to spend the money. So it's really useful for minimizing your capital gains tax yep. because you don't want to spend the money selling all the stocks mm-hmm. that you hold, but you don't want to lose money. Mm-hmm. So then you, you buy that and it hedges against your, your stock portfolio. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is gear, which is also Australian. So these are both by beta shares yep. um, that uses internal leverage to maximize your upside mm-hmm. and your downside on the ASX. Yeah, right. So that one's about two times leveraged. So yep. that means that Half of the fund, so for every dollar that you put in, half of that goes to um, getting debt, Mm -hmm. which means that you double your exposure to the ASX. Mm -hmm. The ASX goes up 1%, you make 2% return. Mm -hmm. But on on the opposite side of that, there's a huge downside because the ASX goes down 1%, you lose 2%. That's not exactly how it works, but it's a pretty good representation of how it is because it can be one point five that you could make or you could lose yeah. one you know mm-hmm. i don't know it's it's not exactly always tracking because it's really tricky to line up all the futures contracts and the debt and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff mm-hmm. uh, the next one i want to talk about i want to talk about some u.s options for that there's sqqq which is the inverse of the nasdaq oh, yeah. but i think it's leveraged against the nasdaq yeah um so you can get yeah inverse leveraged mm-hmm. um which means that yeah you you can triple your if the if the nasdaq goes down one percent mm-hmm. um you can make three percent yeah by use, leveraging the inverse of mm-hmm. the nasdaq so it's a little bit complicated for mm-hmm. our, uh, our new ones but you can brush right past that because you don't need to buy that kind of thing mm-hmm. um and then tqq is um tqqq in the u.s is one thing that i've bought before which is triple leveraged regular nasdaq so yeah 
that one's really cool. That's um, yeah, always going up. So mm-hmm. I mean, no, it's not. Well, but it's <laughs> <laughs> always going up when the Nasdaq's going up. <laughs> um, one thing that I hold. So here's here's another way that you can buy ETFs. Yeah. So you can buy a foreign currency um, ETF on your exchange based on someone mm-hmm. else's index. Mm-hmm. So one thing that I have is NDQ, mm-hmm. which is on the ASX. Yeah. That's an ASX ticker. Yeah. So it's the NASDAQ 100 ETF. Yeah. That you can buy with Australian dollars on the ET- on the ASX. Yeah. But it tracks the top 100 tech companies on the NASDAQ. Yeah. But this one's different not only because you're exposed to foreign exchange risk, which is problematic, but it's also um, the fund doesn't hold the underlying stocks. Mm-hmm. It uses futures, futures contracts to keep the index tracked at all times. Because the prices become more accurate then. Because in Australia, the ASX is open in the nighttime for the US. Oh, yeah, true. So the NASDAQ is technically closed. Mm-hmm. But how do you make a price based on that? Because the yeah. market maker has to make the price. Yeah. yeah. So um, so then you can go you can go a bit more int- industry-based. So um, there's an ETF specifically based on uh, sports betting. It's BETZ by Round, uh, Round Hill Investing. In what? On what exchange? Uh, that's in the US. Um, right. There's ESPO by Vanek, which is a video gaming and esports ETF. All of these are about 7.7%. Um, percent. Yeah. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, there's specific, you can buy a portfolio of bonds, um, Australian government bonds if you want. You can buy corporate bonds. You can buy bank bonds. Interesting. Uh, and then you can buy gold in an ETF. So yeah. I have IVV, I think, mm-hmm. on the on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. So that's a really cool one. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one, the next part that I'm going to talk about is liquidity. Mm-hmm. So market makers are really important in the liquidity portion. Yeah. So um, one thing that can make you feel safe, I guess, with ETFs is that if there are no retail investors buying and selling the stock, mm-hmm. um, it's vital that there's a very large bank there to back it up. Yeah. Um, so in the equity dealing room, they'll um, they'll be there to make a bid and ask price mm-hmm. for anyone that wants to buy or sell for a certain level of of purchasing. Um, and so that's the level they, they make a spread on that as well. Um, but like that's, you know, they have to be prepared to, to, yeah, make the bid and the ask. It's important that they're like able to do that so they can keep the, um, the market moving when there's like low liquidity. Mm -hmm. So like they have to keep doing that, but it's also important that the ETF manager is able to buy and sell the individual stocks within the ETF. Mm -hmm. Uh, because with that, and they also use banks as liquidity providers to do that, Mm -hmm. um, because it's important to keep the portfolio allocation correct inside the fund. Yeah. Because if, you know, Commonwealth Bank's going down or whatever, they need to sell it to keep the market cap correct as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's tricky. They need to keep adjusting, Mm -hmm. like, their their individual stocks in there. Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's um, that's that's ETFs. That's a little rundown. That's interesting. So for um, for a first time uh, buyer, yes. How would you suggest the progression? And what's uh, what is the like the safest option? What's the um, most volatile option? What what would be like a quick? Yeah. So so like obviously, if you're buying a passively managed mm-hmm. market cap based ETF, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that's the that's the cheapest way to kind of get into it. Mm-hmm. It's also the it's also definitely the best option to like. You definitely don't want to get too complicated when you don't know much. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's it's pretty like it's a pretty good idea just to buy a S P five hundred. Yeah. And you can do that, and then just not think about it again. You can exactly. just keep topping it up. Yeah, it's good. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's um. So you could start there. So okay, so say someone. That's a great starting point. So yeah. someone wants to. What, they just want. Ex- they've got some capital. They want exposure to the stock market. Uh, they don't have time or knowledge yet, um, but they just want to get in. Yeah, that would be yeah. a good way to just sort of jump in for sure. And even with no knowledge, you're not making a silly decision, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Usually you're not, and the indexes will. You know, if you look at the, if you go back and look at the last 115 years, mm-hmm. you know, you're gonna be you're gonna be doing all right with an index fund. Like yeah. there's certain periods in time where. It has taken 10 years to recover, but it's all about the long, long term yeah. game, you know? So, like, and that was literally 1930. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and for the NASDAQ, it was um, 2001 to, I don't know, 2009 or so. Okay. So that's a good but, option. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no that's, that's, um, yeah. okay. So that's a good option as opposed to someone jumping in and being like, oh, I've heard people talking about X stock. Yeah. So if they, I'll just buy that. Yeah, especially it's a good option if you're considering 
if you're a brand new investor and you're thinking, yeah. oh, what's what's best? Should I buy mm-hmm. um, VOO on the New York Stock Exchange, mm-hmm. which is the S and P 500? Yeah. Or should I buy Arc X? Yeah. You know, okay. or Arc K or whatever. Yeah. Like high growth Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you if you don't know much about the innovation side of yeah. growth ETFs or yeah. whatever, yeah. it's probably a good idea just to buy the S&P 500 yes. when you're starting out. Yeah. So you go to your broker yeah. and you look up one of these tickers and mm-hmm. you you fund it with your cash yeah. and you're able to buy, yeah. yeah, able to buy one of these ETFs. And um, okay. and yeah, obviously there's, um, there's some great Australian options out there as well for the ASX 200, yeah. and, uh, that kind of thing. So yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And then potentially as you... Um, what I've found is as you become exposed to different assets, then like you're interested in them and you'll research them and you'll talk about them with people. Yeah. yeah. And so then your knowledge will grow and then you might think, oh, I could really see like the space of, um, you know, well, it's a bad example because I don't really have any space stuff in their ETF. But yeah, 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 yeah. You might think, oh, like uh, uh, AI is going to be the next thing. Yeah. And then so if you if you really have... Um, an opinion on that, then you could go and find an ETF, might be an ARC ETF that um, just specializes in AI and then you could buy that. Yeah. Um, and then you could look at what they have in their holdings and you could research the companies, right? Yeah. yeah. You can see what percentage of it is uh, of the companies are in each ETF. And then you could maybe one day, if you get some really um, strong, you know, opinions about a company, you could buy the underlying company. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah it's, a, it's a great start. Um, okay. Uh, that's great. Um, that's really good. Cause as you say, there's so many people who, um, are just sort of wanting to get involved with the stock market. And so that I think for me, an index tracked ETF is, is awesome start. And then maybe, uh, a managed ETF yeah. and then like the leverage stuff, I'd say maybe like, don't bother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's something that if you really advanced into it, yeah, yeah you definitely that, don't want to start with index. Yeah, exactly. Sort of like, uh, index and then manage, have a look at some actual stocks one day, maybe yeah. get a really good idea of what's happening, have some sort of special idea that something's going to go up and down, then go and get some sort of leveraged ETF. Yeah. So my, my main tip for starting out is obviously you want to do your research on, on your market. Cause like if you're, yeah. you know, I don't know what, I don't know what the UK market looks like compared no, to, exactly. you know, yeah, it's good. Um, compared to France, compared to, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, not that we'll have that many European listeners, but <laughs> Um, I know that the S and P 500 and the ASX, that's like, that's what I know. Yeah. Um, and I know that they always recover and that they're yeah. always, they've got strong governments and strong companies. Yeah. So like, I'm not really worried about the long term vision. Yeah. And it's like, you want to be holding it for, you want to think, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about daily price movements. I'm just getting exactly. out of this in 10 years, it's a good tip 15 years, new person 20 too. years, you know, whereas you might jump in and lose 30% in your first year Yeah. and you're like, oh no, uh, oh, 30%, then you pull out because you're scared, yeah. you know? Yeah. So like continuously dollar cost averaging is a really good yep. method. I'll, I'll do something on dollar cost averaging, yep. you know. Oh, we've mentioned point. it before, but it's worth diving into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and also looking for the lowest expense ratio if you're doing something passive. Yeah, so smart. low expense ratio, that's a good, it's good, good one to research. Look up a few companies, you know. You've got Vanguard, BlackRock. Um, they pretty much operate in every country. Yeah. Um, you've got State Street. And in yeah. Australia, you have beta shares, which is really cool. And these are companies that um, create, they, they create the ETF. They create ETFs. So, yeah, they yeah, create them good. and then they um, charge the management fee. Yep. The management fee also is one thing that I should talk about. Mm-hmm. That's taken internally. So, you don't physically pay yeah, that's good. a fee. Um, that's just taken out of your gain. Yep. So, you just lose a small portion. Exactly. So, it's good gains. to be aware of, but you would never notice it. But, yeah, you don't have to. You don't really have to worry about it. It's not something yeah. you have to think about yeah. after you've bought your ETFs. Yeah. yeah. It's good. So yeah, done. That's that segment. So I feel like we should wrap it up. Yeah. For two reasons. One, We're it's twenty to, to six. There. Yeah. And two, it's been an hour and a half. Yes. Good. Good episode. I think it's great. Um, I like the little learning segments. Uh, hopefully people will. We'll, yeah, we'll get do, some feedback. We'll do another one next week. Or we will because we got, got one some, sitting right there. Yeah, you got one. You got one ready to go. <laughs> um, perfect. All right. Well. Uh, yeah. And. You know, you you always got to remember that this is the show that hits harder than Floyd Mayweather hits Logan Paul. Welcome to Goodbye from HQLA 14. <laughs> I was reading it straight off the thing. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Catch it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.